Reporting on the games you love by people who love to game. The MMO Reporter Network. Hello everybody, I am here with Elizabeth Toby, otherwise known as Dahanis, on the forums and everywhere. We're here, uh, not, we're not going to talk about Rift, we're not going to talk about Defiance, we're not going to talk about Arcade, we're going to talk about you. Okay. Now I think the one question that everybody has is, I hear a rumor that you have a famous dog. <laughs> So can you tell us a little bit about that? Can. Uh, so her name is Pancake. She's a miniature long-haired dachshund. She's six years old this December. And I would argue that she is more famous on the internet than I will ever hope to be. Um, so the thing about her is we, when I, back when I worked at 2K, we were in a dog-friendly office. When I first came over from New York to California, I wanted a dog because it was one of the perks. You have a bigger place, you can have a dog now. So I was like, I'm just going to start bringing her in and this office is going to be dog friendly. So I also got that started at 2K. And she, she came in the day after I bought her. So she just lived there. She was there several times a week always. And I had like an L-shaped desk and she always sat there. And what really got her famous was when the Borderlands 2 loot chest came out, people wanted to know how big it was. And you know, you always put like an Xbox controller next to something or whatever, but I was like, I'll put my dog in the chest. Took a picture, it was just for like a bunch of people on the forums, not a big deal. I don't think I was the first one to put it on Reddit, I think I put it on Imager, but it definitely got on Reddit. And then all of a sudden people were saying that my dog was on the front page of Reddit. You know, it was like the number one spot for several hours on gaming. Um, she got like four or five million views to the picture, it was crazy. And then, I think it was a couple months ago when the last Guinness Book of World Records edition came out, the gaming edition, she's in there. Oh, that's so awesome. Yeah. That's pretty exciting. So let's go back and uh, let's let's think about your earliest gaming memory. I did ask Greg that too. So what's what's your earliest gaming memory? Sim life and Sim Earth. Um, there's a couple things. You know, I don't remember the first DOS machine that my dad got us. He was always bleeding edge of technology. So I remember stuff like Operation Neptune, like those kinds of learning games that I loved. Um, but then when we finally got a Windows machine, they only wanted to buy us things that were like educational. I remember when we got Wolfenstein 3D and it was like a complete coup and we were like, play it before mom finds out. Um, but Sim Life and Sim Earth, I played all the time. And I feel like how much I played those and especially like the original Sim City, I made like epic stories because you sit there for so long and you like create the soul of your city. Um, and so that's definitely my first memory. Oh, cool. And how did you start in the gaming industry? Where where did you get, did you start in community management or? I did. I started as a community manager at 2K, but I wasn't in it before. Um, I lived in Boston for the first year after college, and then I moved to New York City to be with my family, and I didn't know how to make friends. So I went online to a gaming forum, and I was like, hey, who wants to hang out? Um, and it was through that I met someone who was a producer at 2K, and when they decided they needed a community manager and they wanted to found a community department, he was like, well, she's a writer, she's in marketing, like she clearly does this for a living since we all hang out all the time. And I thought, it, I mean, this was 2006, so it was, it was kind of a new position, and I thought I'd never get it because it sounded hilariously fun. And I did, and I always say that I feel like I'm good at community because I always just think, what would be cool, you know, making swag? What do I want? You know, what do I want to see? What, what do I think is fun? And that's always been, I know that sounds like an easy guiding principle, but sometimes it's really hard. And you got to make sure that what I like is also what other people like, but it's, it's not steered me wrong so far. Awesome. So what's, uh, what type of games do you play outside of the stuff that, that Tryon does? What's your favorite type of gaming? So my go-to answer for that is always strategy. Um, Civilization, that series, is definitely my favorite. And right now I'm obsessed with XCOM. I mean, Enemy Unknown, just, I, I worked on it, so near and dear, like, yeah, but. I understand. Yeah. But even before that, you know, I remember the first time I got to meet Sid Meier, I like wanted to freak out and I was like, be professional, be professional. Um, but I'm playing, I've, I've lost my mind to League of Legends. Play that all the time. Complete crack. Uh, when we, when I play with uh, Greg and Kaylin, his wife, I play Payday 2 sometimes. Only played a couple times and I feel, I get a little too excited when I'm playing shooters and may just like spray and pray wildly in, when it's stressful situations. Um, but those two are my definite, you know, go-tos. Awesome. I've heard lots of things about Payday 2, and many people approach it the same way. I watched, I think it was, uh, I think it was Giant Bomb did a video of them, and it was just exactly the same thing. Run into the bank, and how many people can we shoot while still trying to get the money? Well, the thing I like about that game, and the reason why Greg got me to play it, 
is because you don't have to, it's not just like the shooter where we all have to go in and it's all your aim and your skill. They're different skills, you know. Who's going to be the stealth person? Who's going to be the lock picker? You know, I'm the one who's usually deploying the mines and securing the perimeter. So, you know, it doesn't have to be that I'm the sniper. And that's what I like, you know. TF2, I like being the medic. So now I've been lucky enough to watch the uh, the live stream of the pen and paper as well. I am, I, you know, I was saying before, it's been about 15 years since I have played a pen and paper game. It's the saddest, saddest thing. I still have all the boxes collecting dust in my house. I can't get rid of them. What do you like about pen and paper that that computer games just don't give you? So I'm a writer by trade. I, I double majored in creative writing and English. So I think what draws me to pen and paper is that story element. And that's the one thing I really love about uh, we created the Wednesday game. It's called Wednesday Warriors. Um, so that's what really drew me in. Um, I really started doing, you know, there was like online kind of stuff when I was a teenager because I didn't have any friends to play pen and paper with when I was a teen. But then when I got to be, you know, early 20s, met some people, started being able to form groups. When we moved out here, it was several years of hiatus, so I was really happy when I got to meet the Thursday nights because I got to be back in that again. You know, I, I played a lot of White Wolf back in the day, and now we're doing Dungeon World. And I love that because you can use as much of the mechanical structures you want, but you can also just kind of vamp and do real story building. Um, but also, Wednesday Warriors has made it so that I'm buying a ton of dice. Another secret shame is my, my Kickstarter fascination. So I've got, you know, aluminum floating dice coming and a chain mail dice bag, and it's just a guilty habit. <laughs> so uh, with, with the games that we've got at, at Tryon, uh, just really go through quickly. When you play Defiance, what's your favorite activity to do in game? My favorite activity there are definitely the, um, the group campaigns, you know, especially when you're going into the smaller co-op instances. Again, more stressful for me because I really have to pull my own weight. Um, but I love those. And we just got to show off a couple hours ago a uh, sneak peek at DLC 2 with the instanced arc falls. And those are, I like arc falls a lot, but I like the fact that you're going to be able to go into these, like control when they're called and go into them yourselves with 16 people. And I really like that because I love the aspect of online games that is that camaraderie. That's, it's just something that makes me feel good. Yeah. And now, uh, really quick before we end things here for Rift, what's your favorite calling and soul combination? <sighs> I feel like choosing an exact soul combination is like choosing between children. But I am definitely always, and I was actually just talking about this, uh, we're going to start up a new group and start from zero and just go again, where we're all playing classes that we just don't play before and different combinations that we don't play. Um, but for me, I'm always ranged. I always play a pet. Like, that's just what I go to. Um, I used to have a tank, um, and I played that pretty hardcore until like 35. But again, I got stressed out. I didn't like the world on me. But I'm thinking maybe I'll end up being a hybrid so I can still be a damage dealer, but also maybe like an off healer or something. Um, again, healer, so important. Really stressed out. Anybody have tips, please tell me because I don't want to let anyone down. Awesome. Well, thanks so much for taking the time uh, here out of your busy schedule at PAX. What are you most looking forward to seeing here at, uh, at PAX Prime? You know, I... I I'm a big fan of Spelunky. I know they're doing they're doing a panel, so I'm excited about that. Uh, I need to go hit up League of Legends. Uh, really, I haven't gotten to see much of the floor yet, so I need to figure out what I'm doing. I'm haven't gotten to see Enemy Within the expansion for XCOM, so that is definitely something I'm going to keep for. Awesome. Well, thanks so much, and have a great time at PAX. Thank you.